Welcome to our review on the carbon cycle. So when we're looking at the carbon cycle then, what we're really looking at are the processes by which either carbon dioxide is removed from the atmosphere or the processes by which carbon dioxide is then released into the atmosphere. One of the common questions they will give you about this is to give you an outline diagram of the carbon cycle with the boxes for the processes just left blank. So you have to fill in the right processes in the right place. So to help you with that then, if we remember that the process that removes carbon dioxide from the atmosphere is photosynthesis. So that is the only one that is going to have an arrow going from carbon dioxide in the atmosphere to a tree. So as soon as you see that arrow, that is photosynthesis. The ones that will add carbon dioxide to the atmosphere would either be respiration or combustion. So if we have an arrow going from something like vehicles or factories, something that's burning fossil fuels back to the atmosphere, that's going to be combustion. If we have something going from a living thing back to the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, that one will be respiration because all living things respire, whether they be plants, animals, the microbes carrying out decay, all of them carry out this respiration. The only other arrow they might ask you to label is the one that goes between the plant and the animal, which is feeding. So just remember those four key processes and where they occur on the diagram. One of the key organisms involved in the carbon cycle are microbes, because the microbes are actually involved in the decay of any dead plants or dead animals and any animal waste. So that's basically what stops us wading around in dead animals, plants, and any of their waste products around the surface of the earth. What we find is we've got two main groups of microbe that carry out this process of decomposition, which are the bacteria and the fungi. So if they ever ask you which organisms carry out decay or decomposition, bacteria and fungi are the two answers. Now, in order to actually carry out decay, then they need energy. And that energy comes from respiration. And it's that respiration that releases the carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere. The other thing that's going to be released through that process of decay will be the nutrients from those dead items back into the soil and they can then in the future be used by plants to then grow once more. Since we're talking about living things carrying out this process of decay, then what we find is that decay happens more at certain times in the year and that's all down to when the conditions are most suited to our microbes. So what we find is that the microbes need obviously a ready available supply of food. So obviously things like autumn, for example, provide large amounts of this dead material as the leaves fall off the trees. They need oxygen, a suitable temperature, so not too hot, not too cold. They need a certain amount of moisture available and a suitable pH for them to actually function at. If all of those conditions are right, then what we see is a very rapid rate of decay and that's all down to the fact that the microbes are able to work at their fastest rate. One thing we may find is that the carbon that's being built into the bodies of plants or animals may actually stay there for millions of years. So what we find is something like in our oceans, then we've got many, many little invertebrate organisms that have shells. And those shells are made of calcium carbonate. And obviously in there, we've got carbon. So what we find is when that organism dies, the shell doesn't actually decay easily. So the shell will sink all the way down to the bottom of the ocean. And over time, it will be compressed and it'll end up as rocks like limestone and chalk. So what we actually find there is that the carbon in our calcium carbonate is then trapped in our rocks of limestone and chalk. That means that we're going to store that carbon for a very long time, and that is what we refer to as a carbon sink. However, that locked up carbon may not remain locked up forever, and we will find that it will be released eventually into our atmosphere once more. And this generally happens when the rocks that contain that calcium carbonate become eroded through the process of weathering. And at that point, the carbon is then released back into our atmosphere and therefore no longer locked up.